So here is an intriguing cosmological question. If dark matter exists, can it actually form dark matter stars? And if so, can those stars go supernova, essentially forming some kind of a dark matter nova that can potentially influence the universe? And though by itself this might sound really out there and super hypothetical, the actual reality is actually based on a lot of solid foundations and the recent study you can find in the description explores this a little bit more, basically suggesting the answer potentially being yes and even giving us hints on how we can maybe find actual evidence. And so, hello info person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss the idea known as Bossa Nova. Not to be confused with the Bossa Nova, which is a type of a Brazilian samba dance, which I know nothing about and I don't even know if these are the correct moves. They're probably not. But Bossa Nova, named after a really influential Indian physicist, Satyendra Nath Bose, is an actual concept based on actual physics, which is basically what we're going to be exploring today. And we're actually going to be basing this on experiments performed approximately two decades ago that did create these bosa nova in the lab. So this is definitely not a hypothetical concept. But before we talk about all of this, and before we connect all of these dots together, let's I guess establish some fundamentals. With the first one being dark matter, because all of this is of course based on this principle. Unlike about a decade ago, today based on various observations from a lot of different telescopes, there's actually an overwhelming amount of evidence for the existence of dark matter as some sort of an invisible particle. Not a quirk in a formula, and not some kind of an unusual constant in that formula, but a particle that seems to be out there, but we just have trouble finding. And we see this evidence everywhere. You can obviously explore some of the older videos in the description to find out more, but things like gravitational lensing is impossible to explain without dark matter particles. All of these images from the James Webb gravitationally lensed to reveal extremely distant universe, they're all essentially the result of dark matter. Extremely difficult to explain without its existence. But for many years, even though there have been some major experiments out there, so far nothing has been definitively identified as the dark matter particle. There have been some hints, but nothing concrete. And for over two decades, the biggest candidate was known as WIMP, weakly interacting massive particles. And as the name suggests, these would be massive particles, but not really interacting with anything and existing by themselves. And that's essentially the particles that have been searched by many scientists out there. But after two and a half decades, or actually even more than that, nothing has been found so far. And without that observational evidence, it's basically hard to prove its existence. However, some of the first propositions, even before WIMS, were actually something entirely different, proposed for a different reason. And here we're talking about axions. And in a nutshell, this was a really intriguing proposition to explain something inside fundamental particles. Here we're talking about fundamental forces. We know that when it comes to the weak force, the experiments have shown that it's not symmetrical. It tends to produce certain particles over other particles, which is a mystery you can learn more about in one of the videos in the description. But when it comes to the strong force, basically the force that's holding quarks together, for some reason it does obey mirror symmetry perfectly. And this by itself is a mystery because it had no explanation. Why is it that one force is symmetrical and the other one is not? And so back in 1977, Roberto Pesci and Helen Quinn discovered a mathematical solution. They suggested that, okay, maybe there could be some kind of an extra particle produced inside the quarks with the iconic Nobel laureate Frank Wilczek eventually working out the math behind this particle he referred to as axion. With the name itself just being a joke, referring to the axion cleaning products, because here the axions were supposed to clean up the mass inside fundamental physics. But it only took a few years for someone to figure out that axions, if they do exist, and here their existence made a lot of sense, would also explain the invisible dark matter effects. As a matter of fact, axions would explain everything all at once, and no additional particles or any explanations would be needed after that. But the thing is, it would be very difficult to find them, and so just after a couple of years, everyone stopped thinking about them, and the dark matter explanations started to focus on WIMS. But eventually, after decades of non-discovery of WIMS, the axions are basically returning as the most likely explanation. And the explanation here that we've explored in one of the previous videos involves them being so extremely low in mass that they basically start acting as somewhat unusual quantum particles, or basically start acting as extremely long waves. And it's the interaction of these waves in the universe that seems to create a lot of effects we observe in terms of dark matter. Moreover, 
There might be several ways to detect them and obviously prove their existence by using extremely powerful magnetic fields that are supposed to convert axions into visible photons. And there are actually several experiments trying to test this as well. They've only started recently, so there's no results yet. But compared to other hypothetical particles, one thing that makes axions special is that they're basically bosons and they can form larger objects and can basically come together, forming something more massive. In other words, they do interact with one another and can technically form relatively large and relatively massive objects, simply because so many can exist in a single point of space. And according to the math here, if you put a bunch of axions all in the same spot, they basically start acting kind of strange. So once again, first of all, they kind of start forming large waves, despite being a particle. And more specifically, they seem to acquire a lot of effects from the state of matter known as Bose-Einstein condensate, or BAC. Today, BACs are pretty well understood and have been produced in a lab many times, with one of the experiments even conducted on the International Space Station. And it's essentially what happens to various particles if you cool them down to super cold temperatures and if you put them in low density environments. So basically at some point, they will all become a kind of a supermassive wave and start acting as a single object, a single particle or I guess a single wave. And so in this Bose-Einstein condensate, they often acquire a lot of unusual quantum effects, but still kind of act like a large super particle. And in terms of math, this seems to also happen to axions, assuming they acquire a large enough mass. And so for several years now, some researchers have actually proposed that maybe if enough of these axions come together, they might even start forming large enough objects to basically resemble asteroids, planets, or stars. And some of them might start to acquire very unusual effects. They would also start forming what we usually refer to as solitons, a kind of a localized wave, or technically a combination of different waves that becomes stable, preserves its shape, starts to propagate by itself, and can even interact with other complex waves still maintaining its own properties. And so these localized waves basically become their own individual objects and in this case can potentially become the mass of a typical star. On Earth, a good example of a soliton would be something like, for example, a vortex or a bubble ring underwater. And so in this recent study, that's basically the premise for these bosonova explosions and is also a premise for what the scientists believe we can maybe discover. Here they provide mathematical evidence that as these solitons grow in size and become larger and larger, they eventually become stars, and just like stars, they can then one day go supernova. But that's I guess where things get maybe more hypothetical. How can such an object go supernova? Well, it turns out that it can and it has been demonstrated in a lab. And you're actually looking at this explosion right here. And this is from like two decades ago, from back in 2001. Once again, this is that back or Bose-Einstein condensate. And so here, as far back as 25 years ago, by using rubidium-84 atoms, the researchers were able to create Bose-Einstein condensate that starts to act really strange once you change the magnetic field. And so upon shifting the magnetic field just enough, the atom interactions inside a typical back changes from being somewhat repulsive to suddenly attractive, and here it gets, I guess, a little bit technical, due to a phenomenon known as flashback resonance. But what's even more intriguing, as soon as it becomes attractive, they basically collapse on themselves and then suddenly bounce back or rebound, basically kind of exploding. Or essentially we can create these miniature supernova in the lab by using a typical back. And they're known as bosinova. Once again, don't confuse it with that other one. And here inside a typical bosinova, pretty much everything seems to resemble a typical core collapse supernova inside a normal star, which is why they've been used to study these particular phenomena in a lab. But even more intriguingly, even today it's not 100% certain why things happen the way they happen. In other words, bosonova seem to basically be a quantum phenomenon that's still poorly understood, mostly because the energy inside individual atoms is generally insufficient to produce these implosions and to then produce explosions. So the energy seems to be coming from somewhere. But as you can probably guess by now, this is what's implied in this particular study as well. And so here the researchers worked out the math and realized that it probably happens inside axion stars as well and may even end up producing just as much energy as a typical supernova, if not more. And because there's so much more dark matter out there compared to regular matter, these could be a lot more frequent as well. But we would probably have trouble finding them 
for maybe several reasons. First reason is that dark matter is generally concentrated outside of typical galactic mass, usually in the galactic halo. And second of all, these would unlikely to produce a lot of visible effects, mostly because there's no particles around them, and so there's not going to be any glow anywhere. However, these explosions would actually be visible if they interacted with various gas around them. Or I guess, if such an explosion occurred relatively close to some kind of a hydrogen cloud, all of this extra energy would be absorbed and would then be re-emitted in radio waves by all of the hydrogen gas. And it's these unusual re-emissions of hydrogen that could be a telltale sign that these bosa nova seem to exist and do happen after all. And though they have not been discovered yet, they could be found by future surveys, especially if they discover a somewhat minute increase in the glow of hydrogen compared to what's expected. And assuming that this idea is correct, there's even an explanation for how all of these explosions could have actually helped reionize the universe, changing its properties early on. In other words, this provides us with a kind of a multiple solution to various problems in cosmology all at once. The problem of dark matter, the problem of the strong force being symmetrical, and reionization of the universe. But for now at least, these are just once again theoretical propositions based on some of the observations from the universe and the observations with both Einstein condensates. So the actual theory seems to make sense. We just need evidence now. But discovering axions is going to be so much tricky. Once again, there have been some signs, and you can learn about them in some of the videos in the description, but it will take years and years of additional studies to finally confirm their existence. And so on that note, that's just all we have right now. A really cool proposition, a really cool idea, and maybe a potential solution to many physical problems that we cannot explain yet. But we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.